Hello and welcome to my first ever instructional video. My name is Tracy Stevens. Today I'm going to show you how to build your own multiplication chart. I developed this method several years ago to help my students continue with their math skills even if they hadn't fully memorized their multiplication charts yet. I allow them, if they can build it on their own, to use it on tests and homework and whatnot. <clears throat> I'm going to start here with the beginning frame of my multiplication chart. Notice I have not put in the ones. Ones are very, very simple to memorize and we're not going to take time putting them on our chart. So I built with through twos through tens, side across and down, I'm going to do tens next. Um, I'm starting with the easily memorized skip counting um, numbers that they probably learned in earlier grades to start this chart. <clears throat> Doing this helps students um, go quicker and to have checkpoints along the way as they do the more, um, the, excuse me, the lesser known facts. So we did our tens and our down and across. We're going to do our twos. We skip counted by twos in kindergarten. We should have these pretty well by now. Down and across. Always doing down and across as checkpoints. So then if I mess up, I can see it right away. Fives. Five, 10, across, 15, 20. If I make a mistake, boop, I can see it right away and fix it. Doing the down and cross method for each fact as you go really ensures to have your facts accurate on this chart. So we did our easy skip counting facts down and across. I'm going to show you a nines trick. The nines are already partially filled in. We're going to start with 18. One is in the tens place. If we count up in the tens place and put each subsequent digit there, we will have our nines. Oops. We fill them in this way, we're going to just fill them in this way. Same manner. Four and five, this gets a little tricky. We want to make sure we fill them in correctly. One, two, three, four, five's already there, six, seven. Very good. So we have our skip counted easier ones our nines trick, now we can start filling in the threes, fours, six, sevens, and eights. If at this point students still need to add on and add on and add on to each of these, certainly allow them to do that. What I have found is that with repeated practice with this method, even if they are having to add on at this point, they will eventually have them memorized and be able to fill them in without the adding on. They'll be able to skip count by the threes and the fours and the sevens, etc. Okay, so if I need to though, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, you know, please, by all means, it will come eventually. Some students need a little longer time with the facts to memorize them. Not all memories are created equal. Doesn't mean that we can't go on and do more complex math processes. Please note, every time I go down, I also use those same facts and I go across. This gives me very good checking method. As I do this, my, sh my chart shrinks down to fewer and fewer of the more difficult to remember or difficult to add on facts, adding on seven there's a lot more room for error, but now I have many, much fewer to do here than I did before. So if I still have to add on 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, I can do that. Okay. And our very last eight, eight times eight is left. I like to encourage children to just memorize that one. But if they still need to count on, they need to count on. And that's fine. That's how we make a fail-safe multiplication chart. Should be able to do this in 
five or fewer minutes. Um, even with my instruction, I did it in five minutes. So, and then children can, they a lot of times have to be learned how to specifically learn, use it seven times seven, bringing our fingers together. Sometimes that's difficult for ours, uh, our students who have some learning issues or visual perception issues, whatever. For division, seven divided into 35 is five. We can use it for that as well. This can help us with all those advanced skills that we need to learn as we're going up in the grades. I found when students practice this over and over, they internalize it and they actually form a picture in their head of it and often don't even need to write it on paper after a while. But if you need it, there's a tool for you. There's a sort of a nice little safety net to help us along the way so we don't fall too far behind in our math. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.